Good morning. Welcome back to the Southern Bible Thumper channel. We are going to be Bible thumping today by reading Deuteronomy chapter 11. Therefore, thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments alway. And know ye this day, for I speak not with your children, which have not known, and which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm, and his miracles, and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt, unto Pharaoh the king of Egypt, and unto all his land, and what he did unto the army of Egypt, unto their horses, and to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued after you, and how the Lord hath destroyed them unto this day, and what he did unto you in the wilderness until ye came into this place, and what he did unto Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up in their households, in their tents, and all the substance that was in their possession in the midst of all Israel. But your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord, which ye did. Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that ye may be strong and go in and possess the land, whither ye go to possess it, and that ye may prolong your days in the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give unto them and to their seed, a land that floweth with milk and honey. For the land, whither thou goest in to possess it, is not as the land of Egypt, from whence ye came out, where thou sowedest thy seed and waterest it with thy foot as a garden of herbs. But the land, whither ye go to possess it, is a land of hills and valleys and drinketh water of the rain of heaven, a land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thine wine and thine oil, and I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, and lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your head, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thine house and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children, and the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon the earth. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. There shall no man be able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon, as he hath said unto you. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing, if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse, if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day, to go after other gods which ye have not known. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord thy God hath brought thee in unto the land, whither thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gerizim, and the curse upon Mount Ebal. Are they not on the other side? Jordan, by the way, where the sun goeth down in the land of the Canaanites, which dwell in the Champagne over against Gilgal, beside the plains of Moray. For ye shall pass over Jordan to go in to possess the land, which the Lord your God giveth you, and ye shall possess it and dwell therein. And ye shall observe to do all the statutes and judgments which I set before you this day. 
Summarizing Deuteronomy chapter 11. Moses is preparing to die. In Numbers chapter 27, God tells him he's not going to enter the promised land with the Israelites. He's going to have to go up into a mountain alone and die. So since Deuteronomy chapter 1, Moses has been giving these extensive details to this second generation out of Egypt. The first generation died off. That was the generation that came out of Egypt and saw all the miracles. In Numbers chapter 13, God tried to put them in their own land. They did not have the correct attitude. So this generation that Moses is talking to, this is 40 years later. And so he's rehashing what has happened with Israel up until this point because they are young adults. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 5, Moses tells Israel, Love your God, keep his commands. I can't instruct your future children because they didn't personally witness God's punishments or miracles, particularly how Pharaoh and his men were engulfed in the Red Sea. Your future children wouldn't understand the significance of what you went through. Verses six through nine, your future children would not understand the impact of Numbers chapter 16. That's when Korah, Dathan, and Abiram opposed Moses and the earth swallowed them up. As we see here, Korah is not even mentioned and he was the ringleader. Moses tells Israel, you have seen these incidents with your own eyes, so keep God's commands so that you can remain in the fertile land promised to your forefathers. Verses 10 through 12. This land is not like Egypt, where you had to upkeep it yourself. God especially cares for it. Verses 13 through 15. If you agree to keep God's commands, serve him sincerely, God will continue to provide rain to sustain your crops and grass for your cattle. Verses 16 through 17. Do not allow yourselves to become deceived into worshiping other deities. God will become angry and withhold the rain that your crops will need. Your crops will die and then you will die. Verse 18, this is referencing Deuteronomy chapter six. Keep these commands in your heart and soul, bind them as a sign upon your head. These commands shall be as frontlets between your eyes. So the definition of sign, we see all of this. A post, this is kind of what I thought of it, a post to command. And then frontlet means a band. So the commands are not going to be written and placed on the head, but the preceding sentence is saying, keep this in your heart and your soul. So just, uh, Keep it in the forefront of your mind, maybe. That's why it's a, a frontlet. Then verses 19 through 21. Teach these commands to your children as you go about life. So as you're walking, by the way, when you lie down, when you rise, as you're doing things in life. And then physically write them down on your walls at home. Gates, so that you and your children will enjoy long life in the land. So the commands are also supposed to be written and displayed at the city entrances and at the walls, on the walls in the home. Verses 22 through 25, if you keep these commands, 
I'll drive out your enemies. I'll give you strength to conquer. You will enjoy ample land. No man will be able to successfully resist you. God will inspire neighboring populations to have fear and dread of you. Verses 26 through 28. You'll be blessed if you keep God's commands, and you'll be cursed if you don't, and instead follow other unfamiliar deities. Verses 29 through 32. When you go into the new land, bless Mount Gerizim and curse Mount Ebal, or throw your curses onto Mount Gerizim and uh, your blessings onto Mount Gerizim, throw your curses onto Mount Ebal. And then he asks a rhetorical question. Aren't these mountains beside the Morit Plains, basically? And then he tells Israel, pass over Jordan, take over Canaan, and keep all of God's commands. So in this chapter and in this book so far, Moses is repeating himself and sort of dragging this address out. Uh, he's been talking to Israel since Deuteronomy chapter one. We have to remember Moses was socialized as a, an Egyptian. His first wife actually thought he was an Egyptian. He grew up privileged and he did not have to be the leader of the Hebrews who were a slave class. It was actually more of a detriment to him and a lot of work. And he had to bring his brother and his brother's children Again, we don't know what happened to Moses, either of Moses' wives. We just don't hear about them anymore. He has children. We just don't hear about them anymore. He's dedicated his entire life to leading Israel. And now the people that he actually left with are no longer here. He's got these young whippersnappers, the second generation. He's having to inform them and he's emphatically trying to communicate because he understands they're not going to have him to, in, to do intercessing if they mess up like their parents did. So he's trying to make them understand how severe keeping these laws are and how to avoid total destruction. I will say, I personally think Moses is dragging this out because he knows he's getting ready to die. And so he's repeating stuff that he's already said in Deuteronomy chapter six. I think he both wants to emphasize how important it is, but he's also dragging it. This is a rough way to end. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to read with me. Part of why I like to read out loud, or actually the, the big reason why I take the time to read out loud, and you should be reading out loud too, to speak the word over your life every day. And you should do it in the morning before you have a chance to do anything else. Even if you decide not to read with me, you should be doing this on your own to speak that word over your life. Also praying Psalms 91, that's the prayer that I saying when I was hit by the vehicle. So I just want to pass that along as a prayer to memorize and um, you will find protection. Pray in Jesus name, end your prayers in Jesus name. Me and you are going to have a wonderful day. I love you.